Hello there, everybody. My name is G244, and today I've got for you the immortal, or what I'm calling the immortal, uh, Technomancer build. So, I'm gonna start with some strengths and weaknesses first. Uh, I would say, uh, obviously, one of the strengths is gonna be that he's immortal. Uh, the second one is the damage output is actually pretty good, despite the fact that I'm so heavily uh, invested into defense. Um, and the, the build is very good at doing the, uh, like where you need to charge up the obelisk or charge the, the stone or uh, just like defend an area like an arena. Um, the weaknesses are it's not great for clear speed, like as far as like if you're having to run through a zone and kill enemies around you, um, it's not super great for that. Uh, because of that, it's best if you do it um, I'd like best if you use this build in a in like a group um, with someone that like a rogue or something like that that is good at clear speed, um, just because this struggles with that a bit. Um, so first of all, the gear, um, the weapons really don't matter very much at all because we're gonna be not gonna be using weapons or not gonna be shooting at all, pretty much um, the entire time that we are playing. Um, but what you want on your gear is you want um, anomaly power, status power, and cooldown reduction. Um, as much as that as you can get. Also, like obviously, life and uh, status life leads are good. So the five stats would be the anomaly power, status power, cooldown reduction, uh, max health, and skill life leech would be the ones that we we would want. So um, yeah, so that's like the most important uh, stats for on our, all of our gear. Um, if you can't find high level stuff, um, just get the highest like level um, item that you can that has those stats on it and just upgrade it as you go. Um, that's how I've been doing it pretty much. Um, the second thing is the, uh, the actual skills that we're going to be using is going to be the Blighted Turret, which is going to be uh, for applying Toxic and giving us some skill Life Leech. The second one is going to be uh, tools of destruction. Um, we're never going to use the rocket launcher, always going to be the minigun, um, because I'll show you in a second when I show you the mods, but there is a reason for that. Um, this is one of, the, one of the reasons why it's not super quick, um, because you're only really immortal when you have the minigun out, uh, otherwise you're not, like, you're not super tanky without that out. The third one's going to be the cryo turret. Um, this is going to be our primary damage dealer, apart from one of the mods that we're going to be using in a little bit. Um, this just, uh, it's going to do a lot of damage for you and everything. Uh, next, I'm going to show you the class tree. So this is what I've decided to go with. Um, get anomaly, pick up some anomaly power, resistance piercing, because resistance is against anomaly damage, so the more resistance piercing you have, the better, uh, the better you can damage enemies. Anomaly power, resistance, like increasing my own resistance, just to make me a little more tanky, um, as opposed to this, where I don't, I don't really reload, so I don't need that. Anomaly power, and then I got some toxic uh, afflicted enemies last 30% longer, so that is like another, that's just a quality of life, like keeping the toxic up longer, even after, like if you get frozen or something like that, um, the toxic will run out and then you'll start taking damage and die. Um, this will prevent that. Uh, next is um, activating decay skills, increased anomaly power for you and allies by 30% for 10 seconds. This is going to be great because you're going to, we're going to be constantly. Like every, uh, it should be every six seconds or so, spawning another decay turret. Um, so that will be, uh, we'll keep that up pretty much 100% of the time. Um, and then obviously wipeout is very good, um, just for like finishing things off. Um, I get the fracture, which is more freeze damage, like enemies take more damage when they're frozen. Um, max health, skill leech, as opposed to gadget, gadget skill cooldown. Um, the reason why I took the skill leech over the gadget skill cooldown is because the cryo turret pretty much has 100% uptime. Uh, like there's maybe like two or three seconds where it's not up um, on the base cooldown with a little bit of cooldown reduction from your gear. So you don't really need to uh, take this passive here. The skill leech is going to be better for you um, if, if you have some cooldown reduction anyway. Um, the Then you get max health. Uh, and then this one is. Uh, is very good. Um, the vulnerable status on the enemies, I don't know exactly how much more damage vulnerable makes enemies take, but 
we're going to be freezing enemies quite a bit between our melee and our uh, and our cryo turret, so this will be very important. Um, then freezes are longer. Weapon, we, we have to take the stone, unfortunately. This doesn't do anything for us at all, but we do have to take that node to get to the final nodes. Um, then there's increased armor. This is great for your allies again. This is another reason why the uh, this plus plus exposing frost plus this fracture um, node here is the reason that this is so good in, in uh, party play because you're basically like a pinky damage support almost pretty much. Um, and then another fracture here. So we're, enemies that are frozen are taking ten percent. 30% and then they're afflicted with vulnerable. So they are taking probably, I don't know how much vulnerable it is, but um, at least like 70-200% 70, more damage probably. And then this one, uh, the reason why I didn't go for, like this one would be good, but it doesn't really affect me because I'm not going, not using my own weapons. This is better for the Pestilent Strike. Um, and this one, uh, we're only activating our turret like the minigun uh like once per fight pretty much so we we don't want that at all um it is very strong if you do use a lot of ordens but we're not going to be doing that so that's not necessary um this part here this is very good um activating gadget skill increases your anomaly power and weapon damage by for 40 percent for 10 seconds that's fantastic we're going to be activating uh, that we'll be getting that not all the time but we'll have it like up half the time pretty much um because I believe the cooldown on our cryo turret is yeah twenty seconds, so yeah we'll have that up half the time, but that's still a massive damage boost. And then the second part of this is also great for tanking, because every ten seconds upon or for ten seconds upon losing all health, you will receive a second chance to return to the battlefield. I haven't actually, I'm not hundred percent how this works, so I haven't actually had to use it just yet. But um, that that would be just huge quality of life. Um, the next part is the like the weapon mods don't matter at all from what i can tell uh they don't seem to affect uh when you have when you're using your minigun uh at all um but uh so the we'll go through the mods real quick so the important ones are going to be the increased damage on the cryo turret you want so you'll want to have at least um probably two um two pieces of gear that have the stats that we need and one of the mods that we are required like we're, that's going to be one of our base mods so like for example this one has increased damage on the cryo turret by default and then i craft it on our like this is our highest damage dealer uh apart from the cryo turret it pretty much is one trades one to one with the cryo turret as far as like total damage dealt typically after a match um so for example the uh the untamed power, yeah, the untamed power is the one that is really, really good. Um, because every time you use an ability, every time you melee, um, and every time, yeah, every time you melee, every time you use an ability, uh, it's going to be activating untamed power. There's no cooldown on that at all. So um, every six seconds on our blighted turret, we should be throwing those out um, to deal tons of damage with the... Uh, with the untamed power and pretty much should just be recasting cryo turret every like on cooldown as well um but yeah so the required mods are going to be increased cryo turret damage just the flat increase of damage based on the item level of the gear that's attached to um next can be blinded turret this is the the one that is the big one as far as like why spamming the blinded turrets is so good um Every time you spawn a blighted turret, it does 33,000 damage to enemies within a radius around you. And you also, on that, you pro also proc untamed power off of you. So every time you throw one of these down, you're doing like 50,000 damage to an enemy, something like that. Um, and then if you have your anomaly power boost up, you're doing like, you can do 50, 60, 70,000 damage, depending on if you've spawned a cryo turret recently or not. Um, the next one is going to be uh, cryo turret. It's going to scale with your uh, status power. That one is fantastic um because if you look at my stats here i have 126 percent status power which uh you know pretty pretty good um 
And then next one is going to be the minigun grants resistance piercing bonus. This does affect all of your other weapons and everything. Um, and then the um, this is this is the one that makes us super tanky. So tools disruption active minigun grants eighty four thousand armor. So that will make us go from thirty four thousand to oh, let's see exactly how much armor we get with that active. Um, 136,000 armor. So that's um, at this item level, that is approximately like it's saying it's approximately 80% uh, damage reduction against the enemies. So that is just like really good. Also, the freezing boost here isn't necessary, but it is very nice. Because, um, yeah, that's another 15% damage on enemies that are uh, frozen. So, yeah, um, I'll be back in a second with some gameplay. I'm going to start an expedition and then I'll. I'll start recording just to show a preview of the, the build and everything. Um, so yeah, be back. So yeah, like I said, this is a build that is better in um, in group play. I'm going to show you an example of how you would clear the area as far as the um, as far as the normal area goes, though. Um, so just throw out some turrets, do some meleeing. Um, one of the mods that I do want that I don't have right now is going to be increased melee attack speed. Um, but yeah, I, I don't have that currently. Another thing is like, to look at this, like I'm basically taking no damage. This is a tier 10, uh, which is where I'm at right now. Um, I can do tier 11s, but I just wanted to do a um, example of the build. Um, but yeah, this is how you do. Um, you don't actually want to shoot the minigun. The minigun does do a lot of damage, but your goal is just to keep it up all the time. Since it doesn't expire, um, it does not expire on a, a cooldown. It's just if you run out of ammo, it'll expire. So in that case, it is fantastic to um, fantastic to just just keep it up, basically. Um, as much as possible. So, like, see there, when I spawn the turret, it's 37,000 tips in, which is just, it's completely absurd. But yeah, um, another thing about the minigun is, like, half the time when you activate it, you're able to run with the minigun, the other half the time you're not. I don't know if, like, if the not being able to run is the bug, or if the being able to run is the bug, but uh, either way, it, it you can only run with it sometimes, basically. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and um, I will pause the video here and resume once I am at a defense section, just to show you where this build shines and everything. Because yeah, right now this area is like it's doing well, but like I'm not gonna win any speed awards for this. Like I'm not gonna. If I'm doing solo play here, I'm probably not going to get three three stars just because of the slow walking the uh, and everything else. Uh, typically, when I'm playing in a group, though, I will like not use the minigun and just stay behind and throw out the turrets and everything until we get to the until we actually get to the uh, defense zone. But yeah, like I said, I'll I'll be right back in the defense section to show you where this build shines. Okay, so yeah, this is kind of like a defensey section. Um, I'll kind of show you, yeah, like where the build really, really, really shines. Um, one thing to be to be careful of is make sure that you do not uh, make sure that you do not uh, just tap the two skill, like the the minigun skill, because it will pull out the rockets instead, and then you will be basically a sitting duck for 45 seconds. So, yeah. But yeah, you can just keep this up forever and uh, just keep killing things with your untamed powers that, like I said, our main source of damage for when we have our both our turrets deployed and they're both on cooldown. Just keep meleeing to get untamed power procs keep going. Um, one other thing. Oh yeah, you only want to shoot the minigun. Like, so the minigun damage is very high. Like, I'll show you right now. If what? 
Okay, there we go. That's weird. Um, minigun, minigun damage is very high, but the thing is, it's not like like I said. Our goal is to just be immortal, and yeah, just not die basically. So our um, the only one I really want to use the minigun when you are like let's say for example you're like low enough health where you wouldn't need healing basically um that's the only section only time that i would ever say use a minigun or if an enemy is like if they're like a boss or you know the, the enemy that is like if you're familiar with the area and you know that the enemy they're fighting is the last enemy you might as well just go ahead and mow it down another thing would be obviously um uh, the birds sometimes are worthwhile to shoot down with your guns, but it's not always, just because Crowdhurge Crowd does so much more damage. And you see here, like, my... Uh, you see my life, like, going up and down like that constantly? That's perfectly fine. That's what this build is designed for. We want to take massive damage so that we can just heal it all back up. That's kind of the entire entire point of the build, I guess. But yeah. So. Okay, and then, yeah, so I'm going to finish this mission and then I will show you what the mods that I am looking for still at this point, like the ones that I want to get to be able to like complete this build. So I'll be back in just a second with, with that. Sorry, uh, yeah, one more thing here. If um, this is the, the final area of this mission, uh, there are tons of elites here, tons of enemies, and I'm just out tanking everything. Um, see my time isn't stellar I've been I have been going through as quick as I can but like I said build is not designed around um, solo play you need really need a group that has a strong clear speed you can demolish the defense missions like this last one like the final wave here but um, but yeah other, other than that you need someone else to Way to take care of it. There might be another way to do it actually, like if you were to get a couple mods for your weapon, but uh, I don't have anything like that just yet. As far as I, I have, it's just like this is the, the build at this point. Um, but yeah, uh, let's see what loot we get. Okay, then we're gonna look at take a look at the damage. Um, just I wanted to record that last bit just so uh, I could show that that was the actual um, mission I was doing. So you can see here, damage blocked 1.4 million or 1.5 million almost. Uh, that's insane considering I only have 10,000 life, uh, and damage taken was almost 700,000. But I never, I didn't go down a single time. Um, I healed almost the exact amount of damage that I took um, just from the. Skill Leech and everything else was uh, taken off of the shield that I had from, uh, I have a shield from uh, my chest piece. I have a tier 2 mod that does it. When I go below 30% health, I get shield. So yeah, as you can see here, uh, typically, uh, typically when I'm doing a group play, the Cryo Turret will do about the same amount of damage as the Untamed Power, but the Untamed Power really is our primary source of damage, um, just when we're alone. Uh, it just does so much damage. Uh, cold push is my melee. That also does a lot of damage. Um, and then I use my sniper rifle once when I ran out of minigun, or when I had to block, unblock rocks when I ran out of my minigun. Um, and then, yeah, toxic is the thing that does the next most damage. Blind well, usually does more damage than that, but. Um, I'm not sure why it didn't do so much damage. But yeah, the, the knock wave damage is the one that every time I spawn the blight wave blighted turret, so I'm actually doing more damage with the the mod than the actual turret turret itself. Obviously toxic is doing more than that. But yeah, uh overall, pretty great build. Um I'll show you what the uh what I would want as far as more mods. So um 
ideally I'd want another piece of gear that had an already crafted mod on it, like this one that has my one of my three of my three stat requirements on it. Um, and then I would want to get as far as like getting more damage would go, I would want to get martial arts, which is this one. Reduces the cooldown of your melee skill by 50%. That would make so I get twice as many uh, untamed power procs from my melee. Um, and that's pretty much it. Like I said, not a solo build. Uh, if you're, if you wanna, like, you don't have anyone that you, you are playing with, uh, I recommend joining a party for expeditions. Um, I know online isn't amazing at this point, but still, that's what I would recommend. Um, if you do have a group of friends to play with, I would not recommend more than one person going for this build, just because you know player speed is not great as far as the long string, uh, long stretches of sections. And then, uh, but the, yeah, the damage is phenomenal. But yeah, um, thank you for watching. You have a great day. Bye.